everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm photographer and cinematographer Drew Geraci, and today I'm gonna teach you how to create beautiful AI imagery using Midjourney. Super easy, very simple to do, and you're gonna create some incredible imagery. Uh, we're gonna break this down into four different steps. The first step is just getting you signed up for Midjourney. The second is showing you how to use it in Discord. The third is actually how to change those settings so you can go from version one to version four, and the new beta, which includes stable diffusion. And then we're also gonna show you how to craft your image so you can create absolutely beautiful imagery. So let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is get signed up for Midjourney, and the easiest way to do that is to go to midjourney.com. Very simple. You'll see this sweet looking website, and then all you gotta do is join the beta. Now, once you join the beta, this is gonna bring you to a Discord link, and that Discord link is where you're going to sign in and subscribe. The easiest way to do that is just to go into Discord, just like this, and all you have to do is find a channel that isn't locked, and then come down to the message bar down here, and then just type subscribe. Just like this, you can even click the arrow, and once you do that, it's going to bring you to the subscribe page, and you open up the subscribe page, you say, yeah, no problem, and then for $10 a month, you can get 200 images, or for $30 a month, which is what I would definitely recommend getting, you get unlimited images, you get 15 hours of fast free time, and all the imagery that you create is copywritten to you. So that's really important as well. Now, once you've got that done, it's now time to create. Super easy, very simple to do. We're gonna go back into our mid journey, and the way this works is, if you do the $30 a month one, you can actually message the bot, and the bot will actually allow you to have almost like a private server. Now, all of these images do get uploaded to midjourney.com, as well as your own profile, so anybody can see the images that you create with the prompts that are included with that, but vice versa, you can go out there and look at anyone else's as well, and it's a great way to get a, um, a sense of what's going on and also get inspired at the same time. So what I've actually done is I've gone ahead and I've put the bot on my own Discord server, but you can just use the regular Midjourney server um, and the best way to do that is again just to message the bot like this you can either add it to a server if you already have a discord server or you can just send it a message and you can just say hi and when you come into here it's going to give you your own personal little discord page that way you don't have to worry about everyone else's um, feed coming down on yours as you're trying to create that beautiful AI art now once you're in here what you can do is type a slash settings very simple to do. It's even gonna pop up at the bottom here. And this is gonna show us all of the settings that we have that we can use for Midjourney. Automatically, it is put onto version three or MJ test. And what I'm on is MJ test photo, and that's the actual beta version of Midjourney version four, which allows you to also incorporate stable diffusion algorithm, which gives you the most realistic, lifelike um, pieces of work. And honestly, it's what I love working with the most, so that's what I've got this set to. But you can do Midjourney Mid version one, two, or three, and each of those are stylized in its own kind of unique way that only Midjourney can produce. Um, it's very painterly, very, uh, not necessarily abstract, but it's also not super detailed. If if you want to go for that realistic look, you want to do um, either the MJ test or the MJ test photo. And the photo is probably the one that you want. Uh, next, you can go for style from low all the way up to very high. The way that you can look at this is if the style is set to low, you're going to get more photorealistic photos. If the stylization is set to very high, you're going to get very painterly, very artistic, very abstract looking um, imagery. So play around with that, see what works. Honestly, there's not a huge difference between each one of those, but there's definitely a difference. So um, I like to keep mine on low just because I like more realistic shots. And then going down, you have the half quality, the base quality, and the high quality. If you do choose the high quality uh, with the fast render, it's going to cost you money or um, time on your uh, your subscription. I would just stay with the base quality, and then you can always up res it to the, the full scale beta um, or the um, final secondary up res uh, that you would get from the, the standard version. Now, fast mode and relax mode. Fast mode is going to allow you to get those images back pretty quickly within a matter of maybe 20 to 30 seconds. Relax mode could be anywhere from 30 to a minute. Um, so there's a, there's a bit difference there, but you only get 15 hours of the fast mode GPU use, so use it sparingly. It does go quite fast. You could easily create a couple hundred images in just a matter of a couple hours, and that would just mean all of your time is gone just like that. So be aware of that. I recommend just working in the slash relaxed mode, and that's the easiest way to make sure that you're getting the best use out of your mid-journey subscription, as well as not going over and incurring any other additional costs. Now, beta upscale 
also is one of those things that you can use or not use, but I like using the beta upscale because it even adds an extra level of realism to your shots. So using beta upscale is always a plus. And once we're done with this, you can pay for private mode if you want, but by default, you are in public mode. Private mode, um, I believe, is either a $10 or $20 extra charge a month. Don't think it's really worth it unless you're trying to do something super secretive and you don't want people to see your work or see your prompts. I really don't think there's a reason to grab it. After that, let's start crafting our first image. Now, a lot of people like to start with landscapes, so that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to show you how to craft that image, but then also how to add more to it. That way you can actually see what's happening and how it affects the actual scene. So to start your first prompt, you're just going to do a slash imagine. And it's gonna pop up at the top there too, so you can just click the link there. And once you see this black bar that says prompt, you can start putting in whatever you want. So I'm gonna put magical rainforest at sunset. Simple as that, it's very direct, very to the point. We're hoping that this creates a rainforest at sunset. So we're looking for a lush green forest and a beautiful sunset sky. And that's really all we're looking for at this moment. Now we wanna do uh, minus minus, uh, which is at the top there right by the zero key, and then do test P. That's going to bring up our test server. You can also click it right up here, which it is already clicked up here for me. And then you can do dash dash AR, which stands for aspect ratio. And you can choose any aspect ratio you want. I'm a big 16 by 9 guy because that's what most video is filmed in. But if you like to do portraits, you can do a 9 by 16, and that's just going to give you the best possible um, choice of whether you want a landscape or a portrait photo. So I'm going to do 16 by 9. And then we also have the ability to add a seed. And seeds are really important because seeds allow us um, to go back to that specific prompt and have very similar imagery come from it. So think of a seed as a unique identifier. Every seed is unique in its own way, shape, or form. So you could come up with a number, keep that number for a lot of prompts, and that way if you wanna go back and re-edit that, all you have to do is use the seed. And that's a pro tip right there. So I'm gonna use seed, and then I'm gonna do three, two, one, four. Who knows, random numbers. And then we just hit enter. And now we see what happens. Now, once it gets picked up by the server, you'll actually see it forming its new imagery in real time. So you'll actually see how the AI is working with the algorithm. You may see your image going one direction and then 10% later, it completely changes and goes a completely different direction. That's what's kind of amazing about this. Um, but it's really a surprise every time you get the, at that imagery. And for me, honestly, I just love it because it's so, it's like Christmas Day. You don't really know what you're going to get, but you know that it's going to be something very fun and very cool. And even if you don't know what you're doing prompt-wise, just putting in just random information can still yield really beautiful imagery. Now, what you can do with this is also learn and memorize from that. So by adding certain words, and I will say things like feelings and emotions actually add to the scene as well. So if you want to say a loving, generous, uh, you know, hopeful, inspiring, beautiful, gorgeous, all those type of positive words are going to give it a much more positive spin. If you use the more negative words like horror, sadness, darkness, um, things of that nature, it's going to come in with a much more darker tone. So using feelings as words in your prompts can also help elevate the imagery or push it in the direction that you want to go. So here's our image, it's done. Uh, this is just the, the first version. This is not an up res version. So what we have the ability to do is say, if we like this image, um, I can upscale it and that's gonna put it at the maximum resolution, which is about 2.5K. And then uh, if I don't like it, I can just come over here and hit this button here, which I will just so we can show you. And that's going to generate a brand new um, image from that same seed. So we'll be able to come back to it at another time. But this is still pretty nice. We definitely see that it's a lush, magical looking forest. We see that there's a sun in the sun, uh, or we see that there's a sun in the background and the sun is setting. Pretty much exactly what we wrote in the prompt. How awesome is that? You just made your first AI image, congratulations. But think about doing things that are more specific to something. I would say the more direct you are with the machine, the better it's going to get. Instead of saying, you know, a castle on a hilltop, find a specific castle that you like somewhere, wherever, and put that castle's name on there. And that way that the algorithm can go look through all of the imagery that's on the internet for that specific castle, and then take that and then learn from that and then actually create a new castle doing that. If you just use generic terms, I'm just using castle as um, an example here. Um, it's gonna come up with just kind of like blocks and um, structures, but it may not look exactly as you want it. So the more detailed you can give it, the better. Uh, and also just use words that are common that you would use for searching. Just use common words that are for searching. You don't have to put in full sentences or descriptions or paragraphs. Just use things that might describe the scene of how you want it to actually come out.
So after you've made a collection of images, you can actually go back and see what you've created. All you have to do is click the web browser icon here, and this is gonna take you to your own personal community uh, gallery, I would say, that's inside of Midjourney. All I have to do is click on my name and it's gonna show all of the beautiful imagery that you've created. In this instance, here's the things that I've been working on and it's just kind of incredible to see how the progress has happened. So if I were to scroll all the way down, this is from a few months ago, um, we can see how the, the AI algorithm has changed considerably just in the past couple of months. So whereas, you know, we were getting this kind of, uh, look at, we'll get this guy here. It's coming across as more painterly, not necessarily realistic, but we are getting a good idea of what the subject is. And this was three months ago or so. And if we come all the way back up here to the, the newer landscapes, we're getting <laughs> photorealistic scenes that are just absolutely mind blowing. And it's something that, you know, as this, you know, uh, gets more information, as it becomes more popular, the realism and the, um, I guess the, the illusion of realism is going to become very difficult to tell what's real and what's not real. Um, these, like this photo here is absolutely amazing. I would love to do this with real photography, but here we are using Midjourney to do this in AI. And if you want to just click on my, uh, my link to my name and you can actually see what the, uh, the prompt is right here. And it's also going to show you what the, the resolution is, all that fun information. And then you could take this information and then use it for your own. Jumping back into Discord, we're going to take a look at that prompt again. I'm going to show you how you can add elements to your initial subject. That way you can actually see it progress through time. So here you can see we just have our regular little lush magical forest. It's in the middle of nowhere. But what I want to see is I want to see a little path running down the center here. So what I'm going to do is go back to our original prompt. I'm just going to copy it all with a control C and then come back down to here, do my imagine have my prompt pop up and I'm just going to paste this. And then after sunset, I'm gonna put a comma and this is gonna tell the algorithm to add another subject to the line here. So I'm gonna say stone pathway. So I'm gonna add stone pathway, add another comma after that. I'm gonna put a space right after that comma. And then I'm gonna add another thing that says cinematic. And when you add words like cinematic, it's gonna go out there and try to add depth of field. It's gonna add that more movie quality, more photorealistic quality, and that's really what we wanna kinda of go for. And then I'm also going to add realistic, and then also the word lifelike. Now these words are, they're kind of like subject enhancers, you might say, because what it's gonna do, the algorithm is gonna go out there and look for more realistic, more cinematic, more lifelike imagery versus more painterly imagery. And once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter, and then we'll see what happens. So our new image is taking shape, and we can already see that we're keeping the same color palette, we're keeping the same um, sun, we are adding and changing trees, but we're getting that pathway now, and that pathway has now been added to the scene, so now we effectively have two subjects added, and this is how we're able to more craft um, a much more uh, specific prompt, and we're getting the imagery that we want. What I would suggest is to keep your main subjects in the front of the prompt and then your lesser or weaker um, weighted subjects in the back. So if there's something that you want to have that's definitely the center focal, that should be your first main part of the prompt because that's where the alg algorithm is going to read it from. And then from there on, just lesser down the road. Um, now, this doesn't guarantee that the prompt generator is going to give you that asset, but it does give you a pretty good percentage that it's going to incorporate that some way, shape, or fashion or form into your actual prompt. From here, you can pretty much do whatever you want. We're gonna upscale this just so you can see what the final res photo is. You just hit the U1, which stands for up res. And when that happens, it's gonna kick back with a beautiful up res image, somewhere in the two to 2.5K range of resolution. So the final image is ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is click it. We say open original, and now we get the full 2.5K version. And holy crap, the detail is absolutely insane. We're getting almost photorealistic um, lighting here. We've got volumetric lighting coming in here. We've got beautiful stone pathway, which is what we wanted. And, uh, you know, oh my gosh, just look at this. I have to, like, make it even wider. It's incredible. And this all just took a matter of a few minutes to do. If we go back to our prompt here, we can see where we started. So we just started with you know our regular uh, magical rainforest right up here with no extra words here. We did a new seed generated and then we added the stone pathway to it and then it took this information and then relocated it down here utilizing the same seed. Again, the seeds are really important if you want to manipulate a certain scene and have uh, you know build upon it and craft that scene. So make sure you keep the seed number the same. 
And then, you know, we uh, have this really beautiful final image that we could print. We could use for a variety of different things, sell on a stock site, um, or use it for 3D motion graphics. The possibilities are absolutely endless. I'm going to be putting out another video that actually goes into way more depth and detail about how to craft the image and go to it. But I think this is a really good jumping off point. Um, it'll just get you started. But just remember, think direct. Think very to the point and think very descriptively. And that's how you're going to create the best imagery. Um, I've been working with a lot of people. Everyone I've been talking with is getting super excited about this. And I think what's wonderful about this is that anybody can do it. It doesn't matter what type of creative you are, if you're a writer, a director, a photographer, a cinematographer, this is great for everyone. Hopefully you've learned something, you're excited, you're inspired to go out and try AI yourself. I would love to see what you're doing, so please put whatever you're working on down below, share it, and I'd be happy to, uh, to comment on it. And if you have any questions about how to actually create a prompt or how to craft, um, or how to get into the nitty gritty details, just let me know, happy to answer. Uh, as always, if you guys like what you saw, please like, subscribe, as it really helps the channel. Uh, I do this for free, this is uh, just something I do as a hobby, but I absolutely love sharing the knowledge that I've gotten. And I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Happy AI image generating. All I really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a low base. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, I got the semi-four way. Don't step out.